Okay, hello everyone. I am Mr. Davis. I teach 7th grade and 8th grade math here at Clayton Middle Schools. Many of you have me. If you have another teacher, we're still going over the same kind of topics. We're all working with each other here. Now, we're just specifically we're dealing with 7th grade math equations. Now, in 7th grade, the first thing we're doing, this is actually a review of 6th grade material a lot, is solving one-step equations. They're called one-step equations because they solve them with one step. So problems such as x plus 7 equals negative 12. Now, in order to think of this kind of problem, think about some number plus 7 equals negative 12. Now, many students can do this in their head. If you can't, here is a method that always works. It's called the inverse operation, and you're going to be doing this a lot into through middle school and into high school. To solve this, since you start with the answer at the end, the solution as it's called, you have to find what number gets you to that answer. So in order to get that, typically you would take a number plus 7. To go backwards, you're going to subtract 7. But if you're going to do it to one side, you have to do it to both sides. You subtract 7 to both sides. Now, positive 7 and negative 7 will cancel each other out and go away. We don't care about them anymore. We're left with on the left side an x, negative 12 and negative 7. Remember the rules of integers. When they're both negative, you add them together and keep it negative. If, for instance, it was negative 12 degrees outside and went down 7 degrees, it was at negative 19 degrees, which is very, very cold. The main thing here is to remember inverse operations. You always do the opposite operation. And I, I'm apologizing that there's a glare here from the lights. This will not be the highest production value. You can find much higher production values on other places if you want. This will be specifically going over the kind of problems you're dealing with in your Delta Math assignments. And these are the first few problems to deal with in seventh grade. They're going to get more complicated as we go on, but we're starting off with the basics. Now that is an addition one. What if we had a subtraction problem, like say m minus 12 equals 30. So in this scenario, we have a certain number amount that we take away 12 will give you 30. So we start with 30 and we want to go the opposite of minus 12, which is you add 12 to both sides. And as always, if you feel the need to, you can pause the video, take notes, write things down. I'm going through this quickly because I don't have that much space. Hey, look, I'm not seeing the machines open. Woohoo! All right, now in the future, this will probably be done. These videos have to be taking place in my house, the same whiteboard. You'll, instead of hearing Mr. Wright announce about the Coke machine, you'll hear possibly my six or two year old talking. They're adorable, but they, I'll try to keep them out of the videos. Okay, those are solving equations with addition and subtraction. And by all means, if you ever, ever have questions, feel free to email your teacher still. Just because you're not seeing us daily does not mean we're still not here to help you. I think I had too many negatives in that sentence. If you don't see us daily, we are still here to help, still here to help you. You can email me at richard.davis at socschools.org for help for your, with your assignments or email any of your teachers or go to our office hours as posted on Canvas. We are going to be helping you. That is our job. Now, what about if you have a multiply? For instance, 5x equals, uh, let's say, 47. Spoiler alert, this is going to have a decimal. That's okay. Now, in order to solve this problem, we have to figure out five groups of how many will equal 47. So for instance, if I wanted to give five cookies each to my friends, I only have 47 cookies, how many friends could I have? And would it follow the social distancing guidelines given out by the White House of less than 10 people at this point in time? 
So to solve this, this means 5 times x. So the number is in front of the variable, you means multiply. The opposite of multiply is divide. If you divide by 5, the 5's will cancel over there. 47 divided by 5 is, well, doesn't go evenly, but 5 times 9 is 45, which leaves you 9 and 2 fifths left. Or alternatively, you can write it as 9.4. Just barely gets under the guideline, but if you can cut yourself, apparently you're not following the guidelines and you could be spreading the disease. So be very, very careful. That's the entire point of saying the schools to stop the spread of this disease. That is with solving the equations with multiplying. Let's try dividing. By the way, I typically math teachers stick with x for the variable in equations. It actually doesn't matter in the slightest. I could have p, for instance, p divided by 3 equals negative 2. Okay. To solve this equation, you have to figure out what is the opposite of divide by 3 because we want to undo whatever this operation is to get to negative 2. Well, the opposite of dividing by 3, the inverse operation, to use fancier math terminology, is to multiply by 3. So multiply both sides by 3. The general rule for equations is you can do whatever you want as long as you do both sides of the equation. Now, not every step is useful, but it will work eventually. But this is a pretty basic one. 3 times 1 third will cancel, go away, we don't like you anymore. That leaves you with just 1p over there. I said 1p, but I just wrote p. 1p and p are mathematically equivalent. You don't have to write the 1 unless you really want to. Feel free to if you desire, it doesn't matter. Negative 2 times 3. Well, negative times positive gives you negative. 2 times 3 is 6. That is your answer. Feel free to pause the video. Slow down things if you need to. I know I talk fast, but I don't feel as bad in the video because you can pause as necessary, write things down. We're going to do more complicated stuff coming up here, but this is the basics of how to solve one-step equations. There will be more equations coming up that involve fractions, two steps, but we're starting with simple one-step equations. Thank you, and as always, email if you have any questions.